This week on What's Up Weekly, we're telling you why 43 Chipotle restaurants are closing and the newest models to join the Victoria's Secret Fashion Show. And an adorable event that benefits the Humane Society, all coming up. Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode of What's Up Weekly. I'm Elizabeth Pace. And I'm Sierra Hignite. So we're going to start out with our trending topics with IUDM. They set a record once again with earnings of over $3.8 million. So this beats last year's record. It's beat every year's record with over 600000 from the previous year. So this is a very big deal, especially since it was the 25th anniversary of IUDM. This is a great way to celebrate. That's right. I was actually there because we covered it. I know you were there too. I mean, it was awesome. I had never been before. The atmosphere is great. All the kids looked like they were having so much fun. And I understand it's for the kids, but I think that the students that were putting it on were enjoying it just as much as the kids were. It was such a great experience to be able to go see that. It was, and I've reported for uh, IUDM for IUS TV since freshman year, and I'm a senior now. So it's kind of a special moment for me, too, to end it well and to spend it with record-breaking numbers. So every year the energy's high. Every year there's something to be proud of. So it was a great cause. That's right. Well, moving on to our next trending topic, there has been an issue with Chipotle recently. Over 37 people have recently been diagnosed with E. coli in the United States alone. And I know I had read an article that over 100 people have called and complained saying that they think that they might have gotten it, but actually 37 people have been diagnosed with E. coli. And they said that this has been an issue with kind of the produce, and they have recently had to shut down 43 stores temporarily until they get this figured out. So do you know if any cases have been reported in the Bloomington Chipotle? Um, not that I know of. They didn't release every single um, location of where it was happening, but they said it was kind of sporadic around the United States. Um, it was actually released. Um, someone with the health department in Oregon was the one who had discovered there was an E. coli issue in the produce. So, But I know that places kind of near Cincinnati and stuff have been having issues too. So it's not just, you know, up north. It's here too. Wow, and I know Parents Weekend is this weekend as well, and Kirkwood is a busy place to go. So if you guys are thinking about going to Kirkwood to eat, kind of keep that in mind. Check out Chipotle beforehand. Our next trending topic has to do with transgender rights. So an Illinois school discriminated against a student who is identifying as female, officials say. Township High School District 211 in the Chicago area violated anti-discrimination laws by not allowing a transgender student to use the girls' locker room without restrictions, federal education officials said Monday. The first, this is actually the first case of a uh, discrimination case with a transgender student that's going to federal court. So for anybody who doesn't know, this was a um, young boy who now has tr transitioned into a young female girl, and sh they just completely denied access to this. So yeah, they're taking it now to federal court. The school is saying that you know they were trying to create safety in the locker room because although she now identifies as a female, uh, she still biologically was created a boy, and so some parents were saying how they were, felt uncomfortable with a boy in the girls' locker room. Not saying that I agree with that per se, but that's where their concern's coming from. I think the biggest issue that we're dealing with that is educating students on what transgender is. Right, because I mean, when I was in high school, I never knew the difference between transsexual and transgender. It wasn't until I got to college and took some classes on it that you really learn about the differences and you know the chemicals in your brain that do certain things and make people the way that they are. So I can understand that's a really touchy subject, especially for high school people when you're, I mean, you're going through so much in high school when you don't have those things that make you a little bit different, you know, so I can't imagine how she feels and I can understand, you know, the parent standpoint too, because I mean, if you don't know about that as a parent, I can understand that you are going to be concerned and especially when it's not legally changed and maybe on his driver's license, it still says male. I mean, there's just so many hoops to have to jump through to get that sorted out, I guess. Exactly. And, you know, really Bruce Jenner, who is now Caitlyn Jenner, has broken some of the boundaries of it and it's been like widely accepted, but this just shows that that may be a particular case because just high school students, you know, a girl going into a locker room, a female locker room, isn't as accepted. It's now going to federal court and I have a feeling, you know, both sides are going to be uncomfortable with the situation. Right. It's a touchy subject, but there are going to be several more cases like this. There really is. I mean, I feel like discrimination is definitely getting better when it comes to, you know, gay, lesbian, transgender people, but it's by no means fixed. I think we still have a long way to go. Yeah, so we'll be looking to see how this goes. 
Definitely, but on a little lighter topic, the Victoria's Secret Fashion Show has released the names of its freshman class of 2015 for the fashion show that airs on the 10th. And you might recognize some of the names. Gigi Hadid and Kendall Jenner are rumored to be replacing Carly Koss and Deuce and Crows as they have recently turned in their wings. So, I mean, I love the Victoria's Secret Fashion Show. I look forward to it every year. I think it's so great, so fun. I especially love the artists and finding out who's going to be there. But I was shocked to hear that Kendall Jenner was going to be in the show because I didn't know that she had interest in that. She always does more couture, like Chanel, Balmain. Editorial. Exactly, things like that. I didn't know that she had any interest in this. And she had made an Instagram post that was like, I'm so honored. This has always been a dream of mine. And I was just, go, go Kendall. I yeah. mean, go her. <laughs> it's awesome. Kendall and Gigi are like good friends, aren't Yeah, they're they? like best friends, so they're so excited to be doing it together. They've been posting, like congratulating each other. I mean, I can't wait. I'm sure it's going to be just so awesome. I love watching the fashion shows too, and I think my favorite part as well is seeing which artist is going to perform. And so I know their good friend Justin Bieber did it a few years ago, and Taylor yes. Swift was last year. So I'm going to be really excited to see which best friend of Kendall and Gigi is going to be doing the artistry for this show. Oh, exactly. I'm sure they'll have a little bit of a pull when it comes to the decision. But stay tuned, because after the break, we are showing you some adorable pups in their favorite event of the year. And it's an honor to be here. After suffering a season-ending injury in late March, as you can see behind me, County Humane Association celebrates its 20th annual Run for the Animals fundraiser. The Clear Creek Trail is the perfect spot to bring the whole family for a one mile walk and 5k race. We, we try to come to all the fundraisers when we can because it's fun for the dogs and fun for us. In between the race events, families enjoy Barktoberfest where animal vendors in the community volunteer to educate people about their furry friends. People explore resources the Humane Association has to offer, but they're not the only ones interacting. Owners bring dogs of all shapes and sizes to enjoy the festivities of Barktoberfest. And even if you don't own a dog, rescue and adopted dogs provide an opportunity to join in on the fun. Dogs weren't the only thing that you could see here at the Run for Animals. There were also birds that many people enjoyed. By participating in the run or walk, people are helping raise money to benefit the animals of Bloomington. It kind of reminds us that Pets are a part of everything that we do, so to have a festival where dogs, kids, families, and kind of bring about all that home, uh, it, it's a great idea and it's a great thing to do in the community. Not only that, it allows us to turn around and give back. The nonprofit organization relies on the support of the community. The money raised from the event provides programs and services to support Bloomington animals. The dogs and their owners celebrate their hard work in a family fun parade along Woolery Grounds. A day dedicated to dogs helps provide a better future for the animals and for the ones who love them the most. If you or someone you know is interested in welcoming a new pet into the family, you can visit the Bloomington Humane Society for more information. Well, that's all we have for you on this week's episode of What's Up Weekly. Be sure to tune in next week for more campus and entertainment news. And don't forget to like us on Facebook at IUSTV News and follow us on our Twitter at What's Up Weekly IU. We're also on Instagram now, so follow us at IUSTV. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.